Hey guys, I'm going to talk to you about route resolvers in Angular 2. So basically route resolvers are implemented whenever you need to get data before routing to a particular route in Angular. So let me give you an example. So right now I have this home route and then I route to this garage route which loads a list of cars and displays them on the screen. Pretty simple. Let me show you what the code looks like. So I basically, when the component is initialized, I, I make a server call and then I get these cars and then I add them to this array, which is just displayed in a loop here. Now this causes a lot of problems sometimes when you're working in Angular because by this point the component has already initialized. And so a lot of times you have to add all these checks to make sure that the data is not null because you might have stuff in your template that, rely all, that relies on this array which doesn't exist yet, right? So, you know, if I said something like cars.length, you know, that would fail because cars doesn't exist at the time of this component being constructed. It takes a while until I finish getting the data. So that causes a lot of problems. And that's where resolvers come in. Resolvers basically get the data for you first, and then it allows you to route to the component. So by the time that you initialize this component, you have all the data that you need. And so a resolver is basically a service. So what you can do is I'm going to go into my folder of my garage and say ng generate service and I'll just name it garage resolver. Okay. And then I'm going to go to my routing. And so what you want to do is add that resolver to the route that needs it. So right underneath this component, I'm going to say resolve. And then you give it an object which represents the data that you are sending to this route. So I'm going to be sending it cars and it's going to use the garage resolver service. Okay. So the name of the data and then the resolver that you're using. Okay. So now I can go ahead and close that out. And let's go over to the resolver. So in order for this to actually work as a resolver, you need to implement the Angular router interface called resolve. And so you can import that from Angular router. And you also need to give it a type, right? It needs to know what type of data you're returning in this resolver. In my case, I'm giving it an array of cars, which is my own custom interface, right? Just represents the car objects. So once you've done that, you now need to um, implement the resolver interface methods, right? So I'm going to go to this resolve here. And you'll see that in the documentation, it just has a resolve method. So I'm just going to copy that. And then I'm going to paste that in here. Okay, so it gives you two parameters in case you need them that deal with the the route itself, sometimes you need to do things like get the parameters. Maybe you need the parameters first before you make a server call, things like that. Um, so those are there available for you and you can import both of these from the Angular router um, API as well. All right, and then, and so this T basically just represents the, the type of class um, that you're returning. So I'm returning car array. So I'll go ahead and add that here. And so basically what this is saying is, oh, let me import observable as well, which comes from RxJS. And so basically what this is saying is that in this resolve method, you can return an observable of cars, a promise of cars, or just cars in their raw form. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to create cars here. And then I'll just enter um, something random. And then I'll go ahead and return these cars. All right, so then now back in my component, what I can do is this component is now gonna get that data. It's gonna hit that resolver first, 
get that data and then send it to this component. So inside of the constructor here, I can bring in another service called um, activated route, which is going to grab anything, any data that was passed um, in the router. So you can bring that in from the Angular um, router API as well. Okay, and then all you need to do is say this dot activated route dot data dot subscribe, and then that's going to give you the data from the resolver that we sent back. So I'm just going to log that for right now and see what we get. All right, and then you'll see there it got the array properly. So now we have all the data. So as I was saying before, you can return it in a few different ways. You basically have these three options here. Um, but an important thing to know about these two, the observable and promise, this is a mistake that a lot of people will make when using resolvers for the first time. You need to complete them before you send them in the router. So let me show you what I mean. So let's say I have a observable, right? So I'll say observable equals observable.create give it my observer. So now I just pass it, um, sorry, wrong thing. And now I'll give it the cars, right? So that sends that stream there. I'll just specify this here really quick. So now I'll return the observable instead, right? So this is just returning a stream that I've given the cars, right? So now you'll see that the, the subscription I have never hits, right? Even if, no matter what I do, it never hits, even though I'm still subscribed here, right? The reason for that is because I haven't completed this, this um, stream, right? So depending on how you do this, depending on how you send the data, it's done differently. But for example, here, I would say observer.complete. And that'll finish the stream for me. And now you see I do get the data back. So I just want to point that out because um, this is an issue that often happens when you start to implement resolvers and it can be pretty confusing to solve if you're just starting off. Now I'm going to show you the same thing but with promises. So create a new promise here. So let's say I just want to return the cars inside this promise, and then I just return that here, right? You'll see that it doesn't work. My subscription doesn't hit because I haven't resolved this uh, promise yet. So the best way to do that would be resolve and then give it the cars. And now you'll see I do get that stream. So I just want to point that out. Um, you want to make sure that if you're using these two methods, that you do it in the right way, um, depending on your situation, and you want to make sure that you complete those streams before you send it off. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to actually implement my server call, the one that I call in here, so I can comment this out. And I'm going to bring in my service. And so now you can say return this app service dot get cars. Now what this returns is a HTTP call. So you want to make sure you never do this, right? You don't want to subscribe here and return that. That's not going to work, right? You don't want to subscribe here. The resolver is going to take care of that for you. Okay. So, so you always want to make sure that you do not subscribe. There's other ways of of getting the data first if you need it. Um, you know, for example, you can do map to intercept the data. You can do tap and a bunch of other things that I'm not going to get into, um, but there's other ways. Um, but you want to make sure that you don't subscribe here, right? So I'll just show you what my call looks like. So it just returns HTTP.get and then I get the data. Okay, so I just return that here, but I don't subscribe. I just let the resolver take care of that. Okay, 
So then I'm going to go back here and get rid of this. So now the type of data that get sent back is basically that object we created in the res in the router, which was that object. So you give it the name, right? So cars, which is car. So then now I can say this dot cars equals data dot cars. Okay. And this will basically work in the same way. But the key difference that you'll notice now is that I actually, when I click on the route, it doesn't go to it. It takes a second and then it loads the data. Whereas the other one would route and then load the data, this one will wait first to get the data and then send me to that route. Now, you st obviously you still get a delay because you have to make that server call no matter what. But this is a lot better because you don't have to worry now about null checks or anything in your template because the data will already be here when you run into your ng on init, okay? This isn't gonna make the server call here. This is already gonna be done by the resolver. And I'll just kind of show you what I'm talking about, right? So I'm gonna add a check here, right? That's only gonna display the title if cars.length is greater than zero, right? So I wanna show you this is actually gonna work fine as I have it, okay? But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna comment out what I did and go back to the way that it was, which is making the server call here. And now watch what happens. So now you see I get all these errors and it basically freaks out because at the time of loading this component, cars doesn't exist yet, right? So now I have to go in and add all these null checks. I have to say, you know, if cars exist or, you know, I can initialize this array, different things like that. But you start to see how it becomes a little bit more of a pain and it's, it's just better to have it in the resolver so you don't have to worry about all that so that, you know, when you get to this initialization, all your data is already ready to go.